Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm so grateful that you took a chance and clicked on this video today because we are going to be talking about perimenopause. I have a few videos in my series um, all about my journey with perimenopause. And I thought today would be a great, just like impromptu Sunday morning, little coffee chat to have with you guys. I thrifted this adorable mug the other day and I thought it was just a perfect time to sit down and have some coffee and talk about some symptoms and some things that I'm currently dealing with so that you don't feel so alone if you're going through it too. So if that sounds good to you, grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. So as I mentioned, I've done a few videos. I started a little series called The Diaries, The Perimenopause Diaries, um, just about my journey. There's been so many things recently that I have just documented and felt like I needed to sit down and kind of go over with you guys. Like I said, uh, to encourage you, to let you know that you're not alone on this journey. It can feel very much like you are alone and that you are the only person in the world going through this. It's confusing. Um, there's just so many emotions that go along with it. And as those changes start to happen, if you're not prepared for those changes, maybe you haven't spoken to anybody, you don't have any friends who are going through it, maybe your family hasn't talked to you about it, um, it can be very overwhelming. It can feel like you are completely living in a, another person's body and you just don't even recognize yourself at times. I know for myself that some of the major symptoms have been extreme fatigue. I'm a very active person. I love running. I love teaching bar fitness. I am an ex-professional dancer. Um, my whole life has always been active. I've always been a gymnast. So the list goes on. So for me to feel so much fatigue on a daily basis has been really scary. It has made me feel like maybe I'm sick or something is wrong with me. Um, just, just a lot of emotions regarding that. I do really force myself every single morning to hold to a routine. I feel like that does does keep me somewhat motivated in trying to keep that physical activity up. So every single morning, you're probably gonna hear my washer going off. So I do like to get up really early in the morning. I get about 5 a.m. and I like to have a cup of coffee. And then if it's nice outside, I will generally go do like a 30 minute run or so. I'll try to follow that up with like some kind of weight training or bar fitness or maybe a little bit of ballet class or maybe even light stretching, just depending on how I'm feeling. Another problematic thing that's been happening to me is joint pain. And that is very difficult. That's very difficult for me to deal with. A few years back, I had a pretty substantial knee injury. I tore my ACL fully and did physical therapy and really just like rehabbed myself with Pilates and a little bit of ballet. The pain can really be tough for me, especially because I do teach bar fitness and I am trying to be very active and combat all of these symptoms. So um, if I wake up in the morning and my knee isn't feeling great, I try to just be mindful and gentle with my body and do something that is a little bit more um, low impact. And what's strange about it is it doesn't happen all the time. So there's some mornings where I'll wake up and I won't be feeling any knee pain and I'll be able to go and do a 30 minute run, no problem. And then maybe the next morning I wake up and I'm having just some weird knee pain or low back pain or just some kind of pain in my body where it doesn't feel good to really necessarily be running. So I try to be mindful of that and adjust my workouts to, you know, try to fit my needs that day and be very gentle with my body, listen to my body, but it can be tough and it can be really frustrating, especially if you are used to doing like a certain routine and all of those things are changing from day to day, depending on how you're feeling. Another issue that has been quite an issue for me and I'm laughing about it. Um, and I wasn't laughing about it two days ago. I was actually really upset about it is the brain fog. I literally will write myself a list because I know that I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to forget everything that I had gone to the store for. And then I'll forget to look at my list and then I'll leave the store. I'll come home and I'll have nothing that I actually went to the store for. So it's like this crazy, like cycle situation where I'm like, okay, I need to write this list down I'm gonna put the list in my purse. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to follow the list. I get to the store. I forget that I have the list. It's, it's just this whole thing, you guys. And if you are going through it right now, you understand that the brain fog is real. And the brain fog is also scary because you think, what is, what's happening up here? I can't even remember like what I went to the laundry room for. I can't remember what I need to do today. And it's actually a little bit scary for me. It's been causing me anxiety, which takes me to the next topic. So I have mentioned that I have struggled with anxiety throughout my lifetime, but this has kind of been taking it to another level over the past month or so um, where I really have to talk myself down. I can feel myself getting anxious about things I can't control. I can feel myself just getting very wound up and feeling like problems are much bigger than they are. But it's just something that can generally escalate pretty quickly if I'm not mindful of it. So I have to really be mindful that like, hey, I'm going through this phase in my life right now. Um, and I have to be, like I said, I have to be gentle with myself. I have to be understanding with myself. And I just have to really, really try to keep that at bay, which can be challenging. I've definitely been limiting my coffee intake. Um, I am having my second cup today. 
<laughs> um, and I might pay for that a little bit later on. I'm willing to take the risk today. Sometimes that will definitely be too much for me if I'm having like one cup of coffee in the morning. I'm usually good. Um, I'm somebody in the past who would just like refill my cup and keep refilling my cup because I was teaching classes, I was dancing, I was performing, I was just doing a lot of things that required me to, you know, have a lot of energy. So I was kind of guilty of falling into drinking too much coffee on a daily basis. But now I'm good at like one or two cups. And if I go over that, I definitely feel it. And I feel my anxiety coming and I feel like it's kind of harder to control. Symptoms that are kind of newer and have been creeping up lately. And I've been making a log and I would highly suggest make a log as well. So if you're gonna go see your doctor or you're just kind of wondering where you are in this perimenopause uh, you know, position right now. But it also kind of helps you too to kind of understand where you're at from month to month because your menstrual cycles are going to be different. Things are gonna be changing. Um, but I've been having a lot of headaches. So I'm not someone who typically does have a lot of headaches and I've been noticing that, you know, I'll get them like midday. Maybe like super, super crippling or intense or anything like that, but just enough to be there, just to, just enough to be kind of annoying where um, I've, I've had to take like ibuprofen more than normal and some different things that I'm not used to and, and trying to get used to. Another issue I've been having is that I've been extremely emotional. So I can literally just be watching a TV show or watching a commercial and something will be somewhat sad on there and I'll just start crying and feeling very, very sad. And I know that that's just the dip in my hormones right now and all of the things that are happening, but it doesn't make it any less stressful, scary, you know, worrisome because you are going through this whole new phase and it's things that you're not prepared for. It's like you feel like you're not living in your own body. But on top of all of those things, I've also been noticing some physical changes that I'm not quite happy with, but you know, it's all part of it and I'm trying to combat it as much as possible. But I have been noticing that my hair has been getting really, really dry. On top of that, I'm also noticing that my skin has been becoming a little bit more dry and trying to do a lot of really hydrating treatments. I've switched my makeup around a little bit to kind of add some more moisture into there. So it's just a lot of things. Whole point in making this video for you guys. And if you like this type of content, I am happy to keep you know, doing these little diaries for you is to let you know that this is a normal process. If you're going through it, like I said, and nobody has really talked to you about it, it can definitely be scary and it can feel extremely unfamiliar, just like I mentioned, like you're living outside of your body. Do you think that by making some videos like this, throwing in some recipes and some exercise videos for you guys and some ways to maybe help you if you're on this journey as well, we can do this together. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're currently in the same kind of phase or stage of your life, leave me a comment below. We can support each other. I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful and fabulous Sunday and I'll see you in my next video.